Hey guys, happy Monday. I thought for today's video I would do kind of a story time video, but it's not so much one big story. It's more of lots of little stories. Everybody who has ever worked a retail job or a service job has a lot of funny stories from their job, and I thought I would tell you about some of the interesting, weird, and funny things that happened to me when I was working at Winners for about almost six years. So if you're in America or other parts of the world where they don't have Winners, basically Winners is kind of like TJ Maxx. It's basically like a store that sells designer interesting brands, but they don't keep current stock. It's always individualized to the store and the community that the store serves. So going there is kind of like going to a thrift store. You don't know what's going to be there. They don't have consistent stock at all, so it's kind of exciting. You don't know what you're going to find there. Winners is owned by uh, TJX parent company, so they do HomeSense, uh, TJ Maxx, a uh, couple other ones? I don't know. Anyway, the very moment I turned 16, which is the legal working age here, I, like literally the day after my birthday, I went and handed out like 20 resumes to all the stores that I thought would be good to work at. Before that, I had been working lots of odd jobs and stuff because, you know, the way I grew up is like, if I want something, no one's gonna buy it for me. I have to buy it for myself. So I was just working all kinds of little odd jobs that I could before I could legally get a job, like the kind of job where, you know, you get a real paycheck every two weeks and it's like, you know, it's like a real job. So as soon as I could, the day after my birthday, I went and handed out a bunch of resumes. I was really excited to get working. And it was really funny because nobody called me back except for my first choice, which was winners. So I was like, well, okay, I'll take it. And I worked there from the age of 16 till about 22. I didn't quite hit my six year mark, but I was just under it. I really liked working there in general, actually. Like I got along really well with all my coworkers and it was, pretty much for the city I lived in, one of the best places that you could work as a teenager. So I really liked working there. I spent a lot of money while I was working there too because we had so much good stuff come in. In fact, like a lot of people, whenever I do photos or videos when we're in the kitchen, people are always like, where did you get all this cute kitchen stuff? And basically from the age of 16, like I knew I was gonna be moving out and have my own place and I wanted it to be cute. So as soon as I started working there, I had a big Tupperware container that I kept in my parents' basement and whatever cute home stuff would come into the store, I would just buy it and put it away and never think about it again. And then when I moved out, when I was, I think 22, I had this box of stuff that was like, oh cool, my whole kitchen is already outfitted. Weird stuff happened to me at that job, not because of the job itself, but because as I've said before, Weird stuff just happens to me. It's just who I am. There's something cosmic about me that draws weird stuff in. So of course, the first day, my first day ever working at this job was one of the weirdest days I ever had working at that job. <laughs> Basically how Winners works is that they train you on a couple areas that everybody needs to be able to know how to do and then they specialize you in one area. So what ended up being my main job when I worked there was customer service. So I was really good at returns, I was really good at calming people down when they came in in a huff, you know, like, oh, this thing's not working and I was usually able to solve their problems so I did really well there. But the first day, my very first day, I was trained to work the fitting room. Anybody who's ever tried clothes on at a store knows fitting room is like, you know, they count your clothes, they give you a number, and then they send you on your way, and then they organize the stuff after. So it was my first day, you know, bright, bushy-tailed, I'm there, I'm doing my thing, and a customer comes out of the fitting room, and she's like, it kind of smells bad back there. So the lady gives me her clothes and goes on her way, and then I call my manager and I was like, hey, like, I don't know what to do about this, but a lady just came out and she said that it smells really bad back there. And the manager's like, okay, well, I'll come and check it out when I have time. So I hung up and then a couple other customers start coming out and they're like, hey, uh, it smells super bad back there. You need to get that sorted. And I was just like, okay, like, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do because the thing about being at the fitting room is you're not allowed to leave that post under pretty much any circumstances unless it's an emergency. So I couldn't go back there and check myself. So I was just like, okay, like, I don't really know what to do here. It's my first day. So this other girl who worked there who I actually went to high school with as well, her name was Allie. She came and she was like, what's going on? And I was like, there's people complaining that there's a smell back there. So she walked and it was like one fluid movement. She did the like, Simpsons turn around immediately. She was like, oh yeah, it smells bad back there. And I was like, well, like, can you go check and see what it is? Cause I can't really leave. And she's like, okay. And she left and came back 20 seconds later. And she's like, oh, there's poop in there. And I was just like, what, what, what? So by this point, I call my manager and I was like, hey, listen, <laughs> you need to come now because 
we have a situation, you know? And she's like, okay, I'll come. And then at this point, customers are coming and I was like, hey, look, you can try stuff on, but like, it's, we have a situation happening. So like, I don't think you should go back there. And then my manager got there and she's like, okay, go check and see what's happening back there. So <laughs> I walk in and in one of the fitting room stalls, the doors just open a little bit. It's like mostly closed, but then it's like, er, well, just a little bit. And I, you could just tell the smell was coming from there. And I did the like, mm, not to be crude, but there was just liquid mess all over the floor and I was like oh! and then <laughs> walked out. So I felt very underqualified to handle that situation and I just turned to my manager and I was like what do we do? Because in my brain I was just like there's no way I'm cleaning up poop on my first day. I mean I will if she's gonna make me but I don't want to. Props to my manager here because I think she took one look at me and was like I'm not gonna make this girl clean up poop on her first day and she was like okay just stay here and I will deal with this and she went and cleaned it up by herself. I'll never forget what she said when she came out though after having cleaned it because it kind of changed a little bit of who I am. She came out and I was just like oh my god I can't who does something like that? Who would do that in a fitting room? Like this is absurd. How how gross is this? And she just looked at me and she's like Ange the person who did that probably didn't want to do that it was probably an emergency like that's not a fun thing to happen to somebody and i was just like oh it was kind of like one of those moments that you still think about like i mean i'm 26 now and that's 10 years ago and i still think all the time about that it probably wasn't very fun for them to do that but at the same time like it wasn't very fun for me either. <laughs> Nothing like that ever happened again the entire time I was working there. Not only just to me, but to anybody else that I know of in that amount of time. It was just me on that very first day I ever started there. Why wouldn't someone poop in my area the first day I'm working there? Why wouldn't that happen? Working a job like that too, you kind of end up having to make your own fun because it's just mundane every day. So like there was a lot of little things that I did that I don't know that they were bad, but they maybe weren't like professional. <laughs> like for example, when we'd have furniture come into the home goods section, they were always wrapped up in this jumbo bubble wrap. It wasn't like regular bubble wrap. The bubbles were like this big and I would always like cut out a little tiny square of it and put it in my apron pocket. And then I'd walk around and whenever it was really quiet, I'd walk up to one of my other like associates and get right up close behind them and pop them. <laughs> the pop was so loud. It was louder than a balloon popping. It was so funny. Another thing I really like to do is cause like I was on customer service so I usually had to answer the phone when someone was calling and I really liked to pick up the phone in like a Newfoundland East Coast accent because I was pretty good at it because all my parent like my family talks like that so I'd be like hello winners what do you at? oh that's we don't have that no all right just hold on now I don't know if we got those in stock so I just gotta call someone oh no no just come in now like we got like nine of them in stock so there's no way we're gonna sell out before the end of the day just come in oh yeah we close at nine now sometimes I would do announcements in that voice too you have to make your own fun at these jobs and no one ever got mad at me about it. I think they were just kind of like, well, that's Ange. <laughs> that's what she does. It was always harmless stuff, but I had to keep myself amused. Okay, so so one time I was working like at a cashier desk too. And now I'm gonna take you back to a world where iPhones were like new and expensive and cool. Not that they're not still expensive, but like this was 10 years ago. This was like, you know, nine or 10 years ago. iPhones were like really interesting and new. They're not now. If you can imagine a world that that can be true. But basically this woman was at my register and she had her baby in a, like a little stroller and her baby was like, let's say one and a half or not quite a toddler. And uh, the baby was just being really fussy and just like, and she was trying to check out. So she takes her iPhone and to my dismay, to my horror, to my delight, she hands the iPhone to the baby. Here you go. And I was like to myself, like what? The baby takes a phone and it goes, hmm. You know how babies do, like they're hmm, hmm. Smash! It smashes it on the ground and the screen was shattered. Pieces went everywhere and this woman was like, oh no. I was just like, 
what did you think was gonna happen? I still don't know why that seemed like a good idea, but it's really funny because in recent years, I'll be out and people will give their babies their iPads and iPhones and I, even though nothing bad happens, I go, <gasps> this one's super mundane, but it's like one of my favorite things and I think about it all the time. There was this one Saturday morning, I was just like neatening things, you know, near the front of the store. And the thing about working at Winners, and I actually am, so grateful for this in retrospect. When I first started working there, I was a lot more introverted than I am now, and I'm pretty much a big extrovert right now, an extrovert with anxiety. Um, <laughs> working a job like that gave me so many social skills that I just wouldn't have been able to develop if I hadn't worked there. Because when you work at Winners, I don't know if they still do this, but they had this thing called the 10 foot, 10 second rule, which is that if you're within 10 feet or 10 seconds of a customer, you must greet them. So it really forced me to get out of my shell because I just had to talk to people all the time and ask them how they were and make small talk. These were skills that I did not have before this job. So anyway, it's a Saturday morning and this guy comes in and he's like, I don't know, let's say like 22 and I'm like 16 or 17. And he comes in and he's just kind of like looking around the store, kind of like trying to figure out something. And I just went over to him and I was like, hey, how's it going? And he goes, I have a girlfriend. I can't help but think of what was going through his mind. Like, don't even start with me. Back off, lady. How are you? I have a girlfriend. And I was just like, okay, well, that's good. And I think about that man all the time when I walk into stores and you know, you walk in and they go, hey, how are you? I just always want to be like, I have a girlfriend. Just to everybody. I think that that's just a normal response to have to a woman whose job it is to be nice to you. All in all, I'm pretty grateful that I worked there. It was a really decent environment for me to learn a lot of skills that I have now, and everybody was, in general, pretty okay. And those stories I will cherish my whole life. In the comments, please, please, Write your favorite story of something weird or hilarious that happened when you were working a retail or service job. I know you have these stories. Please write them. I want to hear them. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye for now. This is my end card and I can say whatever I want during here because I'm just trying to get you to click on another video. But I would just like to say the one bummer about working at that store was that the discount was terrible. It was 10%. It didn't even cover tax. Why am I still mad about this? It was so long ago. No, no, I'm still mad.